Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are taking the Asobo T6 Texan out for a bit of a spin around the UK countryside. We're also going to be taking a look at Burning Blue Design's most recent scenery of Andrews Field. Actually the original plan for the video was to head to Reno and record some air racing but long story short unfortunately I've been having quite a few issues there with the add-on at the moment. So I thought at the very least that we would take a look at one of the new Reno additions into the sim, the T6. And we'll probably take a look at the rest of the Reno aircraft in due course. Hopefully we'll manage to get a race video done at some point as well. Anyway, for today's flight we're going to be taking out the T6 Texan as I mentioned. The T6 Texan, otherwise known as the Harvard in the UK and many other countries around the world. We've got a nice add-on livery which I've downloaded from flightsim.to by KCGB. He's made a couple of really nice liveries for the T6, I highly recommend going and checking those out. And thank you very much to him for his efforts. As I mentioned, we're currently on the ground at Burning Blue Design's Andrews Field. I've been meaning to showcase the scenery for quite some time now, but haven't found the right opportunity. I thought today's flight would work very nicely. So we're going to be departing out of Andrews Field, heading south towards the city of Chelmsford initially. We'll then turn out towards the east, over towards the town of Colchester. And then we'll point our Harvard back out towards the west, heading back towards Andrews Field for a landing. Andrews Field is located just on the edge of the standard airspace, so we'll make sure that we avoid that throughout our flight today. Should be a fairly quick flight, the flight time around 20 minutes in length. Obviously we'll have a little bit of time there for the startup and the shutdown as well. Really we're just going to be taking the aircraft on a little bit of a flight, get a feel for what the Sobo T6 is all about in terms of quality. And as I said, we'll try and see a little bit more of Burning Blue Design's Andrews Field as we go. As always guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave those down in the comment section below. I'm quite a big fan of the T6 or the Harvard in the real world, so I'm quite interested to see what the Sobo have given us here. Let's head for the cockpit and find out. Okay, so welcome to the cockpit of the T6 Texan. For today's purposes, our T6 Harvard. Obviously we've just got on board the aircraft, so far we're running through our pre-flight checks. The safety belt and shoulder harnesses are secure. The seat and rudder pedals have been adjusted. Parking brake is set. And the fuel quantities. We should be showing 70 US gallons in each tank according to the checklist. We're showing about 55 there, so a little bit of a discrepancy with the Sobo T6. We're on the left fuel tank for the start. The wing flap handle is up and the gear lever is down. And we do have two gear down indications. Carburetor air control is set to cold. Manifold pressure drain valve is set to closed. Generator switch is on, all remaining switches are off, altimeter, we'll set that against aerodrome elevation which is around 300 feet here at Andrews Field. So the altimeter is set, the clock is checked, gyro instruments, the artificial horizon is uncaged, and we'll check the gyro compass again once the engine is running but it looks to already be reading correctly there against the standby compass. Manifold pressure reading, we're showing about 2992 there on the manifold pressure gauge, we'll be checking that again later on during the run-up. Communications equipment is off and the cockpit air temperature control valves, they're both closed, they're not currently modelled on the aircraft. For the start itself the prop has been pulled through two revolutions, we do have our fire guard posted just behind the aircraft. Throttle will open about half an inch. Mixture control is set to fully rich. Propeller control needs to come back to full decrease. Slightly unusual on the T6. We'll unlock the primer. And we'll prime four times. It's a pretty cold day outside. The battery can come on. As can the magnetos. Usually of course we'd call clear prop. But uh, unfortunately and rather annoyingly the canopy doesn't actually open on the Asobo T6. So we'll just check that the prop area is clear, which it is, and we'll engage the starter. So we do have a good start, we'll just come back on the throttle there, we'll idle around 5 to 700 RPM initially, cage up the starter. All pressure has come up, that's looking good, showing about 50 PSI there. So we'll come up to full RPM on the prop. So prop is set to full, all pressure is checked, we'll come up now to around 1200 RPM on the throttle. Let the engine start to warm up. 
The VHF radio can come on, although we won't be using default air traffic for the flight today. And the transponder can go to standby. Fuel selector will come on to the right tank. And again, just checking our fuel quantities are balanced. And we are now ready for the taxi, so the part brake can come off. Just hold the aircraft on the brakes momentarily. Looking at the windsock there, looks like we're going to be using runway 27. Seems to be uh, all clear on our right. Obviously we've got this Cessna 172 here on the left. So we'll swing the aircraft out to the right, just to make sure we clear him. Using a little bit of brake here as well, just to tighten up the turn. Pretty tight in terms of space, but we just about cleared the 172. And now we'll just backtrack our way down the grass here for runway 27. Again, pretty annoying that you can't open the canopy in the T6. It does make leaning out to check the uh, clearance off the nose a little bit trickier without clipping through the canopy. Anyway, it'll be a nice short taxi. We'll just get ourselves turned around into wind here for the run-up. Now we'll just swing out to the left momentarily just to give ourselves some space for the turn. The Sobo T6 is not particularly manoeuvrable on the ground. I find you need a lot of brake to uh, keep the turn nice and tight. And therefore quite a lot of throttle as well to keep the aircraft moving. So that has us nicely into wind, we'll come off the throttle gently onto the brakes, just bring the aircraft to a stop and the part brake can go on we'll come up again to idle around 1200 rpm so the pre-flight checks the primary flight controls are full free and in the correct sense flight instruments our temperature is set, gyro compass looks good, artificial horizon looking good there. So the flight instruments are checked. Fuel system, we'll stay on the right tank for the takeoff. And once again the fuel quantities are sufficient, the tanks are balanced. Flaps, will be a flaps up takeoff this morning. And for the trim, we'll just come to the 2 o'clock position there on the elevator trim tab. So for the run up, we'll come up to 1600 RPM. Come fully back on the stick just to keep the tail down. So 1600, we'll come back on the prop lever, looking for a 200 RPM drop. There's 1400, back to full RPM. And we'll cycle it once more. There's 1400 once again. And all the way up, back up to our 1600. Next we'll come up to our field barometric pressure, which as we said was 2992. making sure the brakes are holding the aircraft. We should be seeing 2000 RPM on the prop there, plus or minus 50, so we're a little bit high in that regard. And we'll come back to 2000 RPM now for the mag check. So it's 2000 RPM, we'll check the mags, we'll come on to the right mag. And check about 100 RPM drop there on the right, back to both. And on to the left. Same there, about 100 RPM drop. And back to both. Check the carb heat. And again, check about a 100 RPM drop there, so the carb heat can go to cold. And we'll come all the way back to idle. And we should be idling around 450 RPM. So that looks pretty much spot on. So for the takeoff, the part brake can come off. Once again, the flaps are up, the carb heat is set to cold. Pitot heat can come on, as can the landing lights. And finally the transponder. And we'll get ourselves lined up on runway 27.
Okay, so we're all set and ready to go. As with most tail draggers in the sim, the Harvard's a little bit strange on the takeoff, so I find it helps just to use a little bit of back stick initially, just keep the tail on the runway. The downside of that, we might lift off a little bit earlier than we'd ideally like to. Anyway, the pipe brake can come off. Come off on the power. So power is set, T's and P's looking good. Just easing back on the stick. And we're up. I'll tap the brakes, the gear can come up. And we're looking initially for a heading of 174. We'll just continue to climb ahead till we're up through 500 feet. We'll come back now on the power, so we'll go for 30 inches on the manifold pressure around 2,000 RPM for now. We're up through 300 feet, the flaps are up, and we're up through 500 now, so we'll turn out towards the south. And just start trimming there as well. And we're looking for a time, it's four minutes out towards the town of Chelmsford, so should arrive at time 4-0. So we'll come back to uh, 25 inches now on the manifold pressure and around 1900 on the RPM. Keep it a reasonably steady cruise. And looking good on our heading there, we're about heading 174, which is what we've got on the flight plan. Just continue to trim the aircraft. Just lost about 50 feet there at the moment. So Chelmsford should be off the nose, a little bit tricky to make out though with the, uh, the sun rather blinding us at the moment. And once we're overhead Chelmsford we know we're well clear of the standard airspace so we can then climb a little bit higher but we'll stay down at 1500 feet for now, as I mentioned. Temperatures and pressures looking good, just have a quick look at our fuel, so 55 on the left and about 52 there on the right. We'll switch over to the left tank again, around uh, 50 US gallons. So I think you can just about make out Chelms for now at our 11 o'clock. Should be following the river in towards the town and you can see the river just off our left wing at the moment. Just crossing over the road, I can see that on the chart, I'm not quite sure though, I can't see the, the name of the road there on the chart. We're well clear of the standard airspace now, so we'll just come up again to uh, 2000 RPM and 30 inches on the manifold pressure. We'll just put the aircraft into a little bit of a cruise climb here. We'll come up to around uh, two and a half, three thousand feet, depending on the cloud base, just so we can see the scenery a little bit better as we go. It tends to make navigation a little bit easier as well if you're higher up. 
Once we're overhead Chelmsford, we're looking for a heading of 060 out towards the town of Colchester. As I say, I'm not so sure about the, uh, the Reno Air Racing for me, but certainly the uh, T6 is very enjoyable in this capacity. Just cruising, taking in the scenery. See we've got a uh, lake just out to the south of Chelmsford. Again I've got that on the chart but I can't actually see the name unfortunately on the map. And you can see the city centre there just down below us on the left. We'll turn overhead the city centre. And we'll level off I think at two and a half thousand. It looks like the cloud base isn't too much higher than that. So looking now for a heading of 060. It's going to be a seven minute leg out towards the town of Colchester, so expecting to arrive there at time four six. There's two and a half thousand, so we'll come back once again. There's 25 inches on the manifold pressure. And 1900 RPM. Now just coming down to a heading of 060, so we'll level out. Looks like that gyro compass is basically functioning as a uh, typical compass at the moment. Not quite sure that Sobo got that one right. So Molden's just off to our 1 o'clock at the moment, you can just see that off the water. And en route we're going to be passing the town of uh, Whittam, which is just down at our 11 o'clock. That's about uh, halfway between Chelmsford and Colchester. So we'll have uh, Whittam on the left and Tiptree on the right. Aircraft's pretty nicely trimmed now, we're maintaining 2,500 feet. We probably could have gone up to 3,000 looking at the clouds there, but 2,500 works fine for us. And a quick fuel check, we're just coming up on uh, 50 gallons now, so we'll come back over to the left tank. And we'll burn through about 10 gallons on that and then we'll switch back to the right again. Still climbing slightly here at the moment, so we'll just keep trimming. We'll get ourselves back down to 2,500 feet. And we want to be just out to the uh, right of the town of Whittam, which we currently are, so heading looks good. We've got the A12 just running up down the left of the aircraft at the moment. There should be a railway as well down there, I think you can just make that out, but it's rather shrouded by the uh, tree line. So just passing a beam Whittam currently, we could just follow the A12 all the way into Colchester but we'll stay on our heading. the town of Tiptree just off the nose and we want to be just out to the left of that looks like we're going to be almost overhead so we're maybe just ever so slightly out to the right of track at the moment again you can see we've got another lake or reservoir off to our one o'clock and again I've got that on the chart so we're pretty comfortable we're bang on in terms of flight plan tracking at least in terms of the bigger picture And we should have uh, Colchester out at our 11 o'clock, which we can already see.
Overall though, quite a pleasant winter's day here in the United Kingdom. Not raining, which always makes a nice change. And I'm realising it must be nearly a year now since I flew out of uh, Burning Blue Design's first scenery, which was Lashenden or Headcorn. Probably a little bit later in the year, I think we had some uh, snow around actually during that flight. Which is fairly unusual in the UK. Anyway, as I say, we've got uh, Colchester off to our 11 o'clock. You can see the uh, water leading in from the coast there, up and towards the town. Off on the uh, coast we've got West Mercy. And out further towards the east is the uh, Clacton VOR. Just for the sake of interest we might try tuning that up. So it's 11445. Correction, it's actually one one four decimal five five. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on uh, Colchester for now. Once we've had the town, we want to turn on to heading of two seven three. That'll be another seven minute leg back towards Andrews Field. So one one four five five for Clacton, which we definitely have tuned up. We're not picking that up on the RMI. A little bit strange. Definitely got it turned on. It's a little bit disappointing, not sure whether or not that's a bug in the aircraft. Anyway, this is Colchester, you can see much more clearly now off our 10 o'clock. And our turning point's more or less out to the southwest of the town, so we're almost there now. As I said, we're looking for a heading of 273, so we'll make a gentle, steady turn out onto our heading. Just brushing through a little bit of cloud there, and we've gained a little bit of altitude, we'll come back down to two and a half thousand feet. Again, we've got the railway and the A12 just down below us. See the river there leading out towards the northwest as well. That leads out towards the airfield of Earls Colm. I'm not entirely sure if that's pronounced correctly. I've never actually figured that one out, but we'll be more or less passing over the airfield as we make our way back towards Andrews Field. So there's our heading of 273. As I said, looking at a uh, seven minute leg, so expecting to arrive back at time 5-4. So just passing back over the A12, that looks good in terms of uh, features. Slightly out to the left of heading here at the moment. And we're expecting, as I said, to pass Earls Corn on the right. Might be a little bit tricky to spot. We'll have the uh, town of Baintree off on our left just before we reach Andrews Field, which I suspect is the town just down there at our 11 o'clock. That'll make a nice, uh, good visual feature for us to track back in towards the airfield. We'll start descending as well now, we're going to be entering back into the into the standard airspace again very shortly. We'll take the car beat as we come back on the engine power. Actually, on second thoughts, I think that's the uh, town of Coggeshall, just off at our 10 o'clock. Baintree will be a little bit further up the road. So we'll come back down to 1,500 feet. You can see the light already starting to fade. It is fairly late on in the uh, season here in the United Kingdom, so we don't get too many hours of daylight this time of year. I 
think that's Halstead just off the uh, one o'clock position. So somewhere between us and Halstead we've got uh, Bell's Corn. Car peak can go off, we'll come back up once again to our 25 inches on the manifold pressure. So now that we're back down at 1500 feet that keeps us clear of the standstill airspace. We do need to be careful though as uh, Andrews Field's located right on the edge of the airspace so we need to make sure we don't head too far out towards the northwest. So we're looking to fly just out to the northern edge of Braintree, which you can see now quite clearly off our 11 o'clock. So it looks like we're still on track at the moment. And the airfield's just out to the west of the town essentially. Probably going to be quite tricky to spot given that it's a uh, grass runway. Not a particularly big airfield either. So what we'll do, we'll just hug the western edge of uh, Braintree until we're happy that we have spotted the airfield, again just to absolutely make sure we're clear of the standard airspace. Do another fuel check, just coming up on 50 US gallons on the left now. We'll leave ourselves on the left tank until we're ready for the landing then we'll come back onto the right. And we'll get our downward checks out of the way now just so that we can concentrate on the uh, airspace situation. So brakes are checked and off, undercarriage will hold, mixture is rich, fuel is checked, instruments are checked, landing light is on and harness is secure. I think I could just make out Andrew's field off the nose at the moment actually, we're coming in more or less for a straight in approach back onto runway 27. We'll start reducing the power, we'll make a straight in approach. Again we'll take the carb heat. We'll start bleeding off some of that speed. Again a real shame we can't open the uh, canopy. It's always good fun for the approach, just to have a little bit more visibility and also some more noise. We'll take the gear down. And we'll start taking some flap. So we have two gear down indications. And we'll take landing flaps. And for the landing checks, pitch is full fine, undercarriage is down, flaps are checked, landing clearance is not required, the runway is clear. So now looking good on the profile, we'll get rid of the carb heat, just side slipping the aircraft at the moment, just to improve our forward visibility. But as you can see, even with the gear down, the flaps down and side slipping the aircraft, the T6 really not wanting to bleed off a whole lot of speed. Just holding the aircraft off. We are going to float quite a bit down the runway here. So there's touchdown. We'll start coming onto the brakes. And back on the stick, holding the tail down. And coming a little bit more firmly onto the brakes now, we'll try and get ourselves 
slow down, we'll vacate off to the right. So you can see we used the whole runway there to get the T6 down. Again, the flight modelling a little bit deficient in terms of, I think, drag and uh, also ground effect. Anyway, we'll backtrack our way back up towards the parking area. That'll give us a nice opportunity to look a little bit more closely at uh, Burning Blue Designs Andrews Field as well as we go. Get the flaps up. Transponder can come off, as can the landing lights. So you can see there's a uh, disused jet aircraft just off there at our 10 o'clock. Not quite sure what the aircraft is, if anyone knows please let me know. Bless you. Got a few aircraft parked up just on the left. Hello folks, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So just passing the competition, that's uh, Mr VR Flight Sim guys, so we'll say hello as we go. Now we'll just make our way back towards the parking area, we'll just pull straight in. And actually we'll go park up on the grass, there's a little bit more space. So bring the aircraft to a stop, right in front of the clubhouse park brake can go on. Once again we'll come up on the throttle to around 1200 rpm. The outer landing checks, the wing flaps are up. Trim tab, we'll set that back to neutral. And you can see there we needed almost full trim in the aircraft there for the landing. So trim is set to neutral, propeller is set to full increase. Post flight, propeller is set at full increase, we'll come back to 700 rpm. Mixture can come back, we'll get the radio off before we shut down. And the mixture can go to idle cutoff. So we have a good shutdown, so nice now that we don't have the logbook pop up anymore, so hats off to a sober on that one. Peter heat can come off, we'll get the position lights off as well. Max can come off. And lastly, the battery. I'd love to be able to open up the canopy, but again, unfortunately we can't do that. Anyway, we're going to take a quick trip over to the bar for a drink. Interestingly, manning the bar is actually a channel viewer who goes by the name of uh, Maverick. So we're going to see Mr. Maverick for a quick tipple and then we'll call it a day. Cheers. <laughs> so there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed our outing in the Asobo T6 Texan. Overall unfortunately the aircraft is nothing special, systems wise it was okay, it certainly looks very nice but as we saw in terms of the flight model I think that's pretty off. Particularly with regards to drag and the ground effect that we experienced there during the landing. I was a big fan and user of the A2A T6 so I suppose I'm naturally drawing comparisons between the two and obviously there's no real comparison to be had. 
Nonetheless, it is nice to see a T6 in the sim. Again, some really nice liveries available from KCGB. So I dare say we won't carry out a couple more T6 flights at some point in the future. I did still enjoy the flight and I certainly very much enjoyed Burning Blue Design's newest addition to the sim. And I hope you did as well. Thank you very much once again to Burning Blue Designs for allowing me to showcase the scenery. And thank you to VR Flight Sim Guy and Maverick for making guest appearances in the video as well. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the flight. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. A very big thank you once again to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. Hugely appreciated. Thank you very much to all of you for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Take really good care, guys, and I will see you all again soon. Last door is at the bar.